And we begin tonight on that very note. Donald Trump drawing his fourth indictment. That is four more indictments than any prior president of the United States has ever faced. And true to form, Trump is having an absolute meltdown on dime store Twitter at Truth Social, lashing out against the justice system and even singling out witnesses. More on that soon. But can, can we just pause for a second on the karmic progression of all these cases, just, just for a moment? The Manhattan DA indictment humbled Trump in his hometown of New York City, forcing him to surrender near the same Manhattan courthouse where the Central Park Five, who Trump called to execute in a full-page ad, were tried. Trump's second indictment exposed Mar-a-Lago as the gaudy Florida hiding place for what the mansion's employees, who clearly don't respect him all that much, called his beautiful mind boxes, stashing them on the ballroom stage and behind a tacky shower curtain in a bathroom. Indictment number three zeroed in on Trump alone as the orchestrator of a plot to stay in office despite losing and then taking advantage of the violence on January 6th to try to intimidate the vice president into going along with his criminal scheme. Indictments two and three were brought by Jack Smith. During the time Rudy Giuliani was mayor of New York and presiding over a police department that specialized in police brutality, especially aimed at black New Yorkers, that same Jack Smith prosecuted the cop who led the beating and torture of Haitian immigrant Abner Louima and who faced Jack Smith in federal court as one of the defense lawyers in that case? Trump's lawyer in the E. Jean Carroll sexual abuse case, Joe Tacopina. You really cannot make this stuff up. But of all the indictments that Trump has faced, it is the indictment, number four, Monday's indictment in Georgia, that might be the most karmically poetic. The prosecutor in that case is Trump's least favorite kind of person, a black woman with power. His disdain comes across in unhinged screeds on Truth Social, to which his superfans respond by showering Fonnie Willis with the N-word. Trump and his 18 co-defendants are facing RICO charges, including Rudy Giuliani, who might be the world's most ironic RICO defendant ever, given that he made a name for himself as a U.S. attorney prosecuting RICO cases against the five mob families in New York before he was mayor. His tactics helped earn Giuliani a reputation as a mob buster, along with, wait for it, a RICO pioneer. I do think that the work in my office and other parts of the Justice Department has changed the definition of the problem of crime in America. Because we're going to have to attack it as a business, not just as individual crime. We have followed up with civil RICO cases. There will be some point in the future in which we will really destroy the power of the mafia. This Georgia indictment is the first time Rudy is being held accountable under these statutes, along with Trump and a motley crew of alleged co-conspirators. Giuliani and Trump will be forced to face a jury in Georgia, where Rudy once made public comments falsely claiming two election workers committed ballot fraud. Tape earlier in the day of Ruby Freeman and Shay Freeman Morris and one other gentleman quite obviously surreptitiously passing around USB ports as if they're vials of heroin or cocaine. I mean, it's, our it's, it's obvious to anyone who's a criminal investigator or prosecutor, they are engaged in surreptitious illegal activity again that day. What was your mom actually handing you on that video? A ginger mint. I cannot say what specifically will uh, take place. I just know that it will Now, that last part was publicist Trevin, Trevian Kuti appearing to threaten poll worker Ruby Freeman. Kuti was charged in the indictment with racketeering, conspiracy to commit solicitation of false statements, and influencing witnesses. Trump and his co-defendants, some of whom have probably spent a lot of time chattering about out-of-control Atlanta crime, are expected to be booked at the Fulton County Jail, which, yes will likely include a mugshot for Trump. Nature is healing. 
But in this case in particular, it is the RICO charge that is drawing a lot of attention since it was enacted under Title IX of the Organized Crime Control Act of 1970 and signed into law by President Richard Nixon. The Racketeering Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act has been used to prosecute the Hells Angels motorcycle gang, to go after corporate scammers, and of course mobsters, again, led by then U.S. Attorney Rudy Giuliani. But all RICO really is, is the commission by one or more people of multiple crimes in furtherance of a corrupt enterprise. The crime consists in basic terms of a bunch of people committing separate crimes to make an illegal plot happen. They don't have to be in the mafia. In the state of Georgia, RICO gives prosecutors a lot of flexibility to charge a group of separate individuals who worked together toward a common criminal goal. DA Fani Willis has used it against gang members, rappers, even teachers alleged to have run a test cheating scheme. And now Trump's election theft, election theft gang. She has treated one criminal enterprise exactly the same as any other, an approach that she shared when she became Fulton County's top prosecutor back in 2021. And no matter if you are at the state capitol or the slums, you will be held accountable if you commit a crime in my community. The criminal enterprise Trump led in multiple states and that he announced on a recorded phone call in Georgia involves multiple players, from his corrupted chief of staff to the kooky Kraken lady and John Eastman and the Cheeseboro guy who birthed the fake elector scheme, to the fake electors themselves who were involved in the scam, and even Kanye West publicist, who you just saw a little while ago, who tried to strong-arm election workers, Ruby Freeman and Shea Moss. That is literally a group of people acting in a single conspiracy to pull off an illegal enterprise. Stealing an election, right? That's the enterprise. I mean, they're all innocent until proven guilty, of course. But there is nothing about that enterprise that is less illegal than a group of educators inflating scores on student standardized tests. In fact, it is much, much worse. And if teachers should go to jail for breaking the law, then so should election thieves, which is exactly why DA Fonnie Willis is forging ahead, proposing a trial date of March 4th, 2024, for her case against Trump and his associates. Willis also asked to schedule arraignments for the defendants for the week of September 5th. And joining me now is Tim O'Brien, MSNBC political analyst and senior executive editor of Bloomberg Opinion, and Paul Butler, former federal prosecutor, Georgetown University law professor, and MSNBC legal analyst. Thank you both for being here. Uh, I'm in New York, so the, usually Paul is next to me. Uh, uh, this time it's Tim, because I'm here in New York. Um, I just want to go back to Giuliani for a second, since you know these characters all so well. And I want to read you what the New York Times, there was an opinion piece by one of his biographers, Andrew Kurtzman and uh, David Hawley, what they wrote about what Rudy has become in his Faustian bark. And they wrote this. Faced with, the political irre faced with the political irrelevance and collapsing client base that would accompany Mr. Trump's defeat in 2020, he seemingly made a Faustian bargain, working to undermine democracy in order to save his career. I feel like the Faustian bargain was a few years before that. But what do you make of the fact that the, the RICO guy is now the RICO defendant? Well, it's, you know, it's Shakespearean in its dimensions because Rudy was an evangelist about the rule of law uh, in, a, in a very draconian way. Um, and he used RICO, I think, to great effect, as we all know, to go after the mob. Uh, the argument being that you could never touch the, the, the people at the head of the mob families because they were very good at insulating their own actions from their minions who went out, their soldiers out on the street who did the crimes. Yeah. And, and Rudy said, well, it was very important to attach what, what lower level people did to the people orchestrating the schemes. Shades of Donald Trump much later. Everybody who's been pulled up in the January 6th investigation has complained that they came there because Trump asked them to come here. They right. thought they were doing what they had been told to do. And yet Trump wasn't being held accountable. The other, you know, the argument against Rico being used by Fonnie Willis to go after Trump has been that it's overreach, that, that it should only go after organized crime. But, but the statute is meant to go against organized criminal conspiracies, not necessarily just conspiracies that Italian mobsters were right. targeted for. And, and, and in that context, one of Giuliani's biggest cases, in addition to the commission case targeting the mobsters, was Wall Street. Mm -hmm. He brought down Drexel Burnham. He targeted Michael Milken, who he cited as the person in the center of this financial web involving insider trade 
trading and financial fraud. Uh, he himself recognized that RICO wasn't a statute that should only be used against people we traditionally call criminals. Um, Fani Willis, as you noted in your opening, has also adopted it, adapted it to, to target other people, including drug dealers. Um, and so I think that, that the idea that, that, that this thing that he created has now come around and snapped him up um, is both ironic but overdue because he sold himself out. Yeah. And he sold himself out to Trump. And it's a reminder how easily Trump corrupts people in his orbit, but he can only corrupt them if they're corruptible. And, and Rudy, for all of his finger wagging over the years at people of color, for being mm -hmm. street criminals, yep. <laughs> uh, mobsters, and, and any others for not following the rule of law, has now shown he's just as base and just as craven as, as any number of the people he once prosecuted. You know, it, it's funny, he once said something to the effect of anyone sort of in public life long enough will become corrupt, right? That people, that he, he prosecuted public officials, you know, elected officials, the Wall Street scandal, guys. The scandal, the Koch administration. That's right. You know. So and, he didn't have a problem expanding RICO beyond mobsters when he was the, a state attorney. Because his view was that justice applied to anyone involved in a criminal act, and especially anyone who was working with other people as part of a conspiracy. And I think Fonnie Willis in her indictment was very careful to use the language from the state's statue on RICO to define why this was a RICO case. Yeah.